Chapter Twenty Four of the Hoosier Schoolmaster by Edward Eggleston. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Bridget Gage. Chapter Twenty Four: The Good Samaritan. The Methodist Church to which Mrs. Matilda White and Miss Nancy Sawyer belonged was the leading one in Lewisburg, as it was in most county seat villages in Indiana. If I may be permitted to express my candid and charitable opinion of the difference between the two women. I shall have to use the old Quaker locution, and say that Miss Sawyer was a Methodist, and likewise a Christian. Mrs. White was a Methodist, but I fear she was not likewise. As to the first part of this assertion, there was no room to doubt Miss Nancy's piety. She could get happy in class meeting, for who had a better right, and could witness a good experience in the quarterly love feast. But it is not upon these grounds that I base my opinion of Miss Nancy. Do not even the Pharisees the same? She never dreamed that she had any right to speak of Christian perfection, which, as Mrs. Partington said of total depravity, is an excellent doctrine if it is lived up to. But when a woman's heart is full of devout affections and good purposes, when her head devises liberal and Christ-like things, when her hands are always open to the poor, and always busy with acts of love and self-denial, and when her feet are ever eager to run upon errands of mercy, why, if there be anything worthy of being called Christian perfection in this world of imperfection, I do not know why such an one does not possess it. What need of analyzing her experiences in vacuo to find out the state of her soul? How Miss Nancy managed to live on her slender income, and to be so generous, was a perpetual source of perplexity to the gossips of Lewisburg and now that she declared that Mrs. Thompson and Shockey should not return to the poorhouse, there was a general outcry from the whole committee of intermeddlers that she would bring herself to the poorhouse before she died. But Nancy Sawyer was the richest woman in Lewisburg, though nobody knew it, and though she herself did not once suspect it. How Miss Nancy and the preacher conspired together, and how they managed to bring Mrs. Thompson's case up at the time of the sacramental service in the afternoon of that Sunday in Lewisburg, and how the preacher made a touching statement of it just before the regular collection for the poor was taken, and how the warm-hearted Methodists put in dollars instead of dimes, while the presiding elder read those passages about Zacchaeus and other liberal people, and how the congregation sang, He dies, the friend of sinners dies, more lustily than ever after having performed this Christian act. How all this happened, I cannot take up the reader's time to tell. But I can assure him that the nearly blind Englishwoman did not room with blasphemous old Mowley any more, and that the blue-drilling pauper frock gave way to something better, and that grave little Shockey even danced with delight, and declared that God hadn't forgot, though he'd thought that he had, and Mrs. Matilda White remarked that it was a shame that the collection for the poor at a Methodist sacramental service should be given to a woman who was a member of the Church of England, and like as not, never soundly converted. And Shockey slept in his mother's arms, and prayed God not to forget Hannah, while Shockey's mother knit stockings for the store day and night, and day and night she prayed and hoped. End of chapter 24